Hey everyone and welcome back to the Firefighters Podcast where we seek to develop, inspire and motivate the world of the emergency services operator through a series of wide-ranging conversations. Now before we go any further, just hit that rate, follow or subscribe button on whatever platform you're listening to. It's a key performance indicator for us and helps us reach even more people. Now here's what we've got for you today. Now in September 2022, I was lucky enough to board a flight to Vietnam where I'd be jumping in swamps, climbing up hills and taking on one of the toughest challenges with an entire group of incredible, crazy, quirky, amazing and inspiring individuals who I'm lucky enough to call my friends as we all went over and took part in SAS Who Dares Wins. Now with any kind of TV production, they're always constrained to fit the absolute best bits into a short window of time. So as you won't be surprised to hear, there is so much more to these individuals than meets the eye. So on this mini series of podcasts, you get to listen in as I catch up with this incredible group of people. We discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly as it comes to SAS, Who Dares Wins, our favorite instructors, our biggest challenges, and also learn a little bit more about what drives them, what inspires them, and how this journey was for them. It's been so much fun reminiscing and catching up, so if you are sitting comfortably, let's buckle up for safety and get in there with today's episode. I'll see you on the other side. There she is. Hello, can you see me? I can't see you, but I can hear you. You sound great. Hold on, hold on. How are you doing? I'm wicked. How was your morning? How was the walk? Yeah, good. It was only a brief one, but I've been up since literally 5 a.m. Body clock. I'm trying to keep my book, maybe not 5 a.m., but at least like 6. Well, I've always, I've always kind of been that. Well, actually, that's a lie. I've been that way since maybe <clears throat> I was like 22. Um, because I realize most people don't get shit done past about 8 p.m. at night anyway. They'll yeah. lose themselves in social media or we watch something on the TV. Or if you look, you know, if you've got some friends around or whatever, fair enough. But most of the time, you're not really getting anything done. So I've always been like half eight, nine o'clock. I'll be in bed. So then I'm up at like half four, five o'clock anyway. You just get loads done before anyone's even awake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just like an energy about in that time of morning as well where you just feel like you're the only one awake in the world and you yeah. can just get it done yeah so i've done like a new vision board done a like put out, get got a reel ready for later so yeah i'm feeling i'm vision feeling boards. i'm gonna have, i'm yeah. gonna have to write that down to it's in fact let's go let's go there first have you ever done vision board before yeah not not for very long because i kind of didn't believe in them for a little while but um but no in the last three four months i've i've had a vision board and just not like no not just just really month by month what like what i want to get out of my life and where i want to be going with it and yeah i need to be a little bit i'm looking at it um now but i want to be a little bit more specific i kind of want to like have a a view of what where i want my life to be and how i want myself to be in that life and then work backwards as, and, and go with what I need to do to get there, if that makes sense. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Gore-Tex Professional Fabrics. Now, we all know the working environment of a firefighter is filled with challenges. We face serious risks on the job, such as heat exhaustion, burns, physical and mental stress, and we frequently come into contact with high levels of toxic chemicals. Now, I have been wearing Gore-Tex for nearly two decades on the front line, working in hostile environments, tackling challenging incidents from firefighting to water incidents and in urban search and rescue environments. Gore-Tex have a well-earned reputation for protecting professionals in the fire and emergency services through their family of highly innovative, waterproof, breathable moisture barriers that exceeds global performance standards and are trusted worldwide. Gore-Tex, going further together. So break, So just zoom out on that for a second for us to help people understand a little bit in case they've never heard it before. When's the first time you were sort of engaged in a vision board? What's your, what's your thought process behind it and why do you think it helps people? Mm. <clears throat> Or what do you think it helps you? Yeah, it's just something that you hear, isn't it? And it's something that, like, goal setting, even like, as a personal trainer, we were taught about goal setting. So it is. It's like, it, but also, I'm obviously a strong believer in, uh, well, not obviously, but I'm a strong believer in affirming and putting out there what you want. And that is then the universe aligns around your beliefs and what you want. And if you don't have a clear direction or a clear path in which you want to go down, Let's put out there what we want to be, where we want to be going, and get to where I want to be. I was going to say, so how do you kind of strike that balance between 
being like people might say open to opportunities and embracing the serendipity of some events versus being rigid with a structure because i agree with you you've got to have you've got to at least have some kind of a plan if you don't have a plan you'll just fit into other people's plans and no, they're not they're not horrible people but they've got fuck all plan for you because they're living yeah. their life and they've got their own passions and their own ambitions and their own dreams how rigid are you with this because it sounds like you feel like you've not have you not been rigid enough or you feel like you haven't really had a plan or you've just been where have you been yeah i haven't well i'm not that <laughs> rigid. it's like i'm very i'm pretty surrendered in life as well so i just have these kind of goals in which i want to achieve and they're new like they're new since i've come back from really? our experience, it, i'm like a new person so i am i am figuring out because after our experience I've got this new sense of like self love and 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 discipline and I'm just seeing myself in a way that other people have seen me for a long time but I haven't been able to see it. So wow. it's like it's very it's very new this even this this vision board that I've done this morning it's still not I I still need to do much more on it. So um it's hard for me to answer that question because it is so new and prior to this I have been completely surrendered and just let life take me where it wants and that and it hasn't led me in a in a place where I don't want to be at all I'm very accepting for ev everything and everywhere like where I am right now but yeah I feel like since coming back um I just want to have more of a say I want to have a clearer direction in where I want to go because up until this point I I have just been surrendered and just kind of floated through life and mm. um, been very internalized like I've spent the last two three years really going inwards reflecting on myself internally spending a lot of time on my own not really going out very much actually doing less work like working a part-time um, like part-time hours just to give me a bit more space um, time with my dog time out in nature but since coming back now I'm like I want to flip it and I want to be out there like I want to get into London I want to start going out more I want to like see you guys more and just yeah. connect with more like-minded people I want to go out get dressed up I want to start working outside of my flat outside of my studio because I live at home and I work from home and that's been the case for like five years Wow. And since coming back from this opportunity, I'm like, and this experience, I'm like, I, I want to get out there. Like, I believe that now that I am worth being out there. Until this time, I've kept myself not small, but contained, contained. And now I'm back and I'm out. I'm like, literally bursting that lid open. <laughs> and I'm like, where, like, where the fuck do you want me? Do you know what I mean? To, to talk to me about that self-belief and that discipline, because when I hear you speaking then and having, you know, stalked the hell out of your socials and all that sort of stuff, and obviously having the, been privileged enough to actually spend some time with you and getting to know you over the past sort of couple of weeks, you are, you're so, you've got a lot of emotional intelligence for other people, but it sounds when I'm hearing you there, like maybe you've not listened to yourself enough in the back. Am I hearing you correctly? When, am I, am I yeah. hearing that right? Yeah, it's really cool that you, you pick that up also because I seem to be excellent at guiding and helping other people and seeing where their kind of weaknesses are and what they maybe need to tap into and and just uh, that they need to resonate with themselves almost to, um, to make those changes. But for me, um, I mean, for me, it's really been the self-doubt and the keeping myself small. Everything else I've seemed to be like okay at um, evolving into, like my own fitness, my own strength, my physicalities, I'm, I've always been excelling in. Yeah. Um, but it seems like there's been a barrier, a block when it comes to me putting myself out there um, what in life has taught you that you, you must have learned I'm not saying necessarily or maybe a person or maybe an environment or maybe a situation what what has taught you to do that or what has stopped you from from expressing that um I think I, I it, a lot of it comes from childhood as does most of our kind of okay. issues so just come from childhood basically the environment that I grew up in um because I know having, your dad was a massive part of your life yeah a huge part of my life yeah huge part of my life um yeah and well I, I, I like you know anyway I lost my dad last year to suicide 
Um, but pr prior to that, my dad was actually the one that was the most encouraging, the most supportive. He was literally like my biggest fan. Um, so if it, and if it wasn't for him, I would not be doing the job that I'm doing now because uh, I was working a corporate IT role um, until the age of 30. And it just really? was not, yeah, it just like, it was me for a time. But then the last year of that career, I was so unhappy, like so deeply unhappy. I was depressed. I just couldn't get out of bed. I didn't want to go to work. I would call in sick. My body was like manifesting all of these It injuries. was rejecting the life that you were putting on it, yeah. Yeah, it just wasn't me. So yeah, I, 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 in the two years prior to that, I'd found fitness for myself. I literally fell in love with it because I was a very anxious, very low person. The person that you know, was, did not exist for the most part of my 20s so it was only really when I got to my I would third... argue she did exist but something was suffocating her like with the environment or with yeah. life or with with whatever food or people or in relationships I don't know just get I think life has a way of, of we allow life to just kind of compact us and yeah. and and yeah, get I loved your self recalibration that we allow ourselves to because we do because yeah. so many people will be like, Oh, life does this to us life does that. No, you fucking allow life yeah. to do that. And so often it's so subconscious because it will come from our parents or those people that sincerely look at want to look after us and love us and guide us. But they themselves live within this own unconscious bias yeah. where they're like, you you should go and do this thing you should get a job in corporate you should get a family and a house and a and a and a do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And it's that victim mentality that I um, have been busy stepping away from for such a long time. Um, you know, we are a product of our own environment and we it's up to us how we live our lives. And if, yeah, if you want to play the victim, you'll forever be that victim and you'll never, you'll never change. So it's hard to unpick those stitches though one at a time this and some of them really hang on it sounds like you've had a few lingering ones even in yeah. these, these past few years what was it about this experience or in fact just, just take us back to your dad for a second because i know we're coming up on a year from from when he passed yeah. was that that did that correlate in any way in like your decision to do something like this or to make that next big step because I've had a number of friends who have unfortunately um, undergone the act of suicide or taken their lives. And it's, it, it shines a big light on yourself selfishly because you kind of feel like very, or I certainly did, sorry, feel very responsible or guilty or there's a, there's a series of feelings that it kind of manifests. Yeah, so the, uh, to answer your first question, 100%, I would not have taken on board and gone on this experience if it wasn't for my dad um, dying and losing my dad, especially in that way. So, um, so yeah, my dad is the gift that keeps on giving. He's even gifted me even when he's not here in physical form, you know? Wow. That's the way I do it because he still teaches me. He's my greatest teacher and he always will be, even in his death. So, yeah, if it wasn't for him passing, I wouldn't have had this experience and be this new person that I am. So I'm also the type of person that is, as difficult as it is, trying to accept something so tragic and something that you sometimes question and think that you could have maybe changed it, it, it I am from eyes to argue with like God the universe this is my path and I am just going to continue to walk it as best I can with my head, head held high and try not to judge it too much obviously suicide grief is a crazy one because yeah. you just can't help but question the timeline before someone someone does that so yeah i mean it's coming up to a year grief changes as the months go on and um and yeah i'm just i'm where i'm at with it right now is i'm just using it as my power really um i spent a long time grieving allowing myself to just be really sad really upset sit in cold rivers do all the kind of energy work that i know helps me um but the unraveling process continues it will always continue for me yeah, yeah, you're I'm right. done, you know then those layers that are put upon us from from birth and even before that from my my belief from past lives and you know um it is it is our karma really to come down here and to unravel and continue that that inner work mm. um for me now, I realise that the, the, there comes a point when the inner needs to extend to the 
better. And that's where I'm at right now and coming off the back of this experience is like, right, you have sat with your shit and sat with yourself for a number of years now. I've done plant medicines. I've drank ayahuasca many times. I've done um, magic mushrooms ceremonially. I actually run retreats for people to come and do healing under the influence of psilocybin. So like, and that inner work, is amazing but there comes a time and this is what i'm tapping into now is when it needs to extend into the outer so all this work that i've done on the inside now i feel is going to start coming up in the outer and i want to like i said to you just start exploring life more get out there do more work share more of myself like i've, I've kept, i wanted to I, ask I you about there. that i wanted to almost ask you about connection because we've spoken there about families and and the people that you help and the people that are close to you in your your kind of inner circle but what i'm not hearing and it may be my own bias listening as well i, I totally appreciate that is how has this idea of only looking not only but predominantly looking inwards affected um your ability to to have relationships and i don't mean like intimate relationships or maybe intimate relationships but even just friendships and and because it sounds as though you have by choice lived uh, an almost monk-like sense of isolation and, and, and inner self-reflection. But if the overwhelming thing I'm hearing there from, from, from ayahuasca and from the descendants in, in, in the way you, that you believe you've come to be here today in this world, a lot of that comes from connection. Mm. So where, where, where are you on connection in terms of those around you, in terms of um, friendships, close relationships? How is that? Is that something you need to feel like you need to work on or is it where where are you with that I, I, I just, it sort of came to me as you were yeah. talking sorry yeah that's a that's a really good question so <clears throat> prior to me doing this self-reflection my life was full of people like full of all sorts of people I had loads of acquaintances I had all different types of social circles and then when that when I turned inwards I did disconnect from a lot of people like at that time when I started reflecting was I had a boyfriend I had lots of social circles I was out all the time out drinking out socializing out for dinners um and then yeah within one year I changed my real job role gone to a personal trainer moved back to my flat on my own um and yeah started that inward journey so so to answer your question the last five years for me have been you could say disconnected from a lot of people. And I guess with my job, because I work closely with people, there has been a connection there with these, with these, with my clients, but it's not no. the connection that's, that's, that's one way. You have to almost maintain uh, a sense of detachment from clients in order for you to be the best version of a coach or support mechanism for them. Otherwise the line yeah. is very, very fuzzy. Definitely. And ultimately they're coming and they're paying me for a service. So the energy, the balance is not, is not equal anyway. No. Uh, but yeah, so I've, I've got a very small inner circle. Um, Has that been conscious? I, Have you like, I, I never like the idea of people saying, oh, cut myself, cut people out of my life. But I'm no. more like when I've continued to grow and evolve, it's just that people haven't necessarily come with me. Not that I'm better than them at all, but they've, I've just chosen a different path and, yeah. and they've, they've chosen theirs and that's okay. Yeah. So not long after me having this, doing this kind of internal journey, I, I switched to a vegan diet. I had quite a few injuries, which led me to go down a yogic path, which obviously is very linked to Buddhism and Hinduism. And my morals started to change. And as my morals started to change, so did the people that I wanted to spend time with. I found myself going out for dinners and out for nights out. And I felt so uncomfortable. I just it, it, it just wasn't resonating with me and it felt so, it just felt so wrong on so many levels. So I, I pulled back from many relationships, even from friends and even from family um, and people that have been in my life for a long time. But I started to realize that we're so conditioned also to stick with people that we've known for such a long time. But it, I was like, but you wouldn't do that with a boyfriend. It's if investment got... bias. I and mean, you know what? Some people yeah. do do it with a boyfriend, though. That's what's worse. You know, it, we think like, oh, I've put five years into this job or this relationship or I've, yeah. oh, I've, I've known him since yeah. I was a baby. So yeah. fucking what? Yeah. With the greatest of respect. It yeah. doesn't mean if, if, if his habits and your habits are going to continue to complement each other and it's a healthy self-perpetuating cycle, then great. But if that person is going in another direction, of course, spend 10, 20% of your time trying to help them. But after that, 
you've got to let people live there. You're not the parent, you know, and it's not about abandoning people, but I would say you've got to work twice as hard on yourself as you do on anything else than your yeah. job, than your relationships, than anything. Yes, yes. And I found that when I was changing myself and changing the way that I acted, it was unconsciously giving other people the opportunity to do the same. Always. Um, but yeah, I just, I just, I definitely, I definitely pulled back from so many relationships. I feel like I had to for me to have a deeper understanding of who I am. Because up until that point, I didn't have a fucking clue who I was. I was just going with the motions of, oh, like what you said earlier, yeah. meeting a guy, settling down, then getting married, then having kids. Blah. Like it just wasn't my flames. I remember being awake in the middle of the night, like with my ex just being like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what are we doing? Yeah. So it, it was a bold move for me to make this split and after the back split, as painful as it was and as scary as it was, I was so scared to be working on my own, like having to fend for myself and not having like that dual income, um, not knowing where I was going to get my clients from. I moved like to like half an hour away. So it was just, it was a lot, but that taught me so much about how strong I was and how much I don't need to be leaning and relying on people. So, yeah, I definitely pulled back from a lot of people. I've, I've reintegrated myself and I've picked up some new friends and some really awesome people along the way. And I feel like now I'm in a place where I have a quality, like quality in a circle rather than a whole quantity of multiple different pe people that just right, like right now wouldn't, wouldn't resonate with me. Like as, as we change, obviously, like as our internal changes, so does our external. Mm. Um, but of coming back of coming back of of our experience, part of the reason why I went into this experience was yeah, why, to meet, why did you go into it? Well, to to basically to challenge myself. I seek pain. Like pain has been my greatest teacher. And instead of now avoiding it, I just go head first into it. All my injuries, any like painful workout. Yeah, I like bash myself, have many cuts and even just painful experiences with people, painful conversations off the back of it's all really of this important. comes amazing, amazing things. So I like seek pain now as, as a teacher for me. So obviously the most painful course in the world was 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 calling me. Um, and but also not just for that, I wanted to meet more people like me, more crazy nutters that also <laughs> mindset so yeah big reason of me uh applying and signing up for this was to meet more people and just how cool that off the back of it there's a whole bunch of us all oh, from loads. yeah up. i always say it's not lonely it's just less crowded yeah you know i mean there's just less just just less freaks out there and if, yeah. if if we don't have opportunities like we have now with social media or with uh, you know uh, experiences like this and courses for people to go on it can be a very lonely existence to be fair yeah and uh you can you'd be forgiven for spending all your life questioning yourself thinking why don't i settle in and why why is everybody feeling fulfilled by this stuff that i just feel empties me yeah I mean? so many of these fast food conversations or popcorn experiences that yeah. feel like they don't yeah. give you a level of fulfillment that other people seem to be getting from it yeah 100% I felt like that a lot with people and I was just like I remember being at a, a, a dinner with a couple of friends and they just spent a whole hour like talking about eyelash extensions and and hair and I was like fair enough like if that's what but I was like what are you doing Danica in this environment like when you like it's not it's, it's just not and that was like the last time I saw them because after no. that I was like, I can't fucking do this because it come to a point where I couldn't lie to myself anymore. I couldn't, I had to stop putting myself in situations where I was losing out or I was being drained of energy because I am a high energy person and I found that there's a lot of people that just wanted to be around me just to, just to, yeah. just to suck the life out yeah, of me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, 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 but before I realised that, I just wanted to, be loved I just wanted to be liked and accepted so I put myself in these situations um yeah without you know thinking shit you're you're, you're leaving empty you're, yeah. you're right full yeah. tank yeah. and you're leaving empty and then it took yeah. me days to, to refill my tank yeah so, that's the thing and mo yeah most relationships like that you tend to leave with a deficit because you are the oxygen to that person's flame you're you are what fills them up um but when you come out of it and you just feel hollow or you feel like you've almost been cheated a little bit not as though you feel bitter about it but you just feel a bit lost as to 
what is this um, experience, relationship, substance adding to, to, to me and my existence? Um, but when the vast majority of people are engaging in it, it can be quite difficult. And most people just continue to power on. I always talk to people about the first time they tried alcohol or the first time they tried smoking, you know, did they like it? And they're like, no, I fucking hated it. But I powered through, you know, <laughs> so I, I soldiered through and I, I managed to force myself into, uh, into that habit. Um, but then I, ironically, when they've been, when they've spent 20 years in that kind of habit, when you then try and encourage them to stretch, like you and I were stretching most mornings or stuff like that, and <laughs> you try and force them into that habit, they're like, oh no, it fucking hurts and I don't really enjoy it. I'm like, yeah, but yeah. you didn't, you didn't enjoy the bad thing the first time you did it. And this is a, this is a good thing. I don't even have to prove it to you. I mean, like, you know, you're a smart person, science and whatever will tell you how good this breathing exercise or this stretching yeah. or just fucking water, just hydrating yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it falls from the sky for free. And I, yeah. I'm having to convince you to do you to have it. It's just fucking crazy. So true. So true. <laughs> so deeply conditioned. And yeah. I think it's like easier for people to go down that that self sabotage route than the self self love route. It's uh, well, they get socially uh, rewarded it, for it as well. So don't they? The ego yeah. just feeds the into the into the negativity fear breeds more fear because what they're really craving is that human connection and when they engage in a lot of those habits that don't benefit them what they do get rewarded with is the social reward so they get acknowledgement and acceptance into a group that they perhaps aspire to be part of and that yeah. becomes the reward metric that then perpetuates the habitual cycle of yeah. almost almost um self-harm in a way yeah Definitely. So when you finally knew that you were coming on the course, what did it feel like the sort of first day you were traveling in? You must have been buzzing. You know, what, did you identify anybody at the airports? And because people, when this turns out, people will have seen all of our journey, but actually they've only seen snippets of it because I think it's doing like six episodes or something, isn't it? Yeah. Well, as we know, we were, well, one day in there felt like five years. <laughs> it felt, I was just like, <laughs> Oh, and it was like the most insane stuff. And we were like, what did we do? What did we do? Like, so, um, so yeah, I mean, the lead up to me knowing that I was going on, it was a, it was a, a whole surge of like confidence within myself because I just couldn't believe that I'd been chosen and picked. I just was like, what? They want me? Like, so it gave me this like boost that I feel like I really needed. Um, and then obviously arriving at the airport, I mean, like I said to you earlier, like I'm super surrendered. I already knew that I was, you know, going on some crazy journey. Like how many people have to pack and get driven to an airport and don't know where they're going? Like what? That was it's wicked, wasn't it? Loved it. Yeah, weird situation that most people will just never, never experience. So, but I was just very, very surrendered. And when I found out we were going to where we were going to, I'd always been there a few times. And it's you, very. Have you been Vietnam? I'd never been Vietnam. Vietnam was amazing. It was my yeah, it was my third time. So, oh wow! I, and my awakening started with me going to to Southeast Asia. I went to Thailand, and after coming back from that trip in Thailand, that was within one year. My whole life was unrecognizable because I woke up when I went to that part of the world. I remember looking around and being like, "Wow, these people like in our eyes, in the Western eyes, have got nothing. They mm -hmm. don't have." Like, Beds. there's kids sharing like one mattress and there's 10 of them they don't have much money they're sweeping the streets but I would see people up at five in the morning sweeping the streets and singing they were so happy and I could see that the happiness was coming from deep within them and it mm. wasn't about what they had because they didn't have anything in inverted commas yeah. they were in life and I and it was something that I couldn't unsee so when I came home I made changes uh, in my life that were just basically a reflection on what I'd learned over there. It was such a culture shock for me. And so when I found out we were going to Vietnam and going, I was going back to Southeast Asia, it is, there's a part of me that is over there and that will always be over there. So I felt so calm and, and happy that I was going to back to Southeast Asia. It was, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful part of the world and it's, and it's somewhere that will always be, hold a special place in, in my heart because of what I, what I learned off the off the back of it, it was a life changing experience for me it's going a over. Place to be, wasn't it? What did yeah. you feel like when you met all of the team? So when we the first time we got together will have been, I suppose, at the 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 trucks when we then got taken out and then yeah. we all got hooded up and then it was the river, wasn't it? So we started on the river. 
Oh God, yeah. So you, yeah, I remember you and Scott. I think were in the connect canoe boat or the. the <laughs> and do you remember when we we were all like at that time we were so like we were questioning everything, the worry. Oh yeah, of what they were just like, oh, walk walk down to the water's edge, and we're like, okay, yeah, yeah and like, like what do what, and they're do? like, we'll just 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 wait there. Like, yeah, should we, should we, and then these boats just started floating down, and then they turned yeah. in, and we're like. Should we get on, or is someone going to come out of the water, or what should we do? Or um, at that point, the unknown was very unfamiliar. But as the days went on in there, the unknown was something that I personally embraced because I was oh, like, yeah, yeah. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. If I to, know. to come, I literally would have been an anxious mess. So it it, it taught me even more about surrender because I was like, I actually don't want to know. And as the days went on, I got to a point where I was like, whatever you lot throw at me, I've, I've got, I can do it. The belief in myself as the days went on, even as the hours went on, like I just got more and more solid in my belief of myself and, and whatever that was thrown at me, I was like, I'm just going to give it my best shot. I don't care what it is. Just go for it. Do your worst. Do your worst stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so when we came around the thing and we had to jump in the water and we had that first swim and then we had that first sort of beast in and then it was all through oh. the swamps and the lakes and then, then carrying people. How did, how did it feel when it finally got started and like the gears changed? And because uh, we had a we had a we had a first drop out on the first day, didn't we? We did. We did. Yeah. So yeah. Charlotte, I remember turning around and, and giving her breathing advice and then DS Foxy was like, shut up, don't help her. And I was like, hold on, two minutes ago, you were telling us we're part of a team and we've got to help each other. But I think she'd gone past the point of no return, to be honest, with her breathing. She was already hyperventilating. Was, yeah. And so, so, yeah, but for me personally, I was just blinkered. I wasn't thinking anything. I was just doing, going, one foot in front of the other. That was such a mantra for me when I was out there. It was just, I was, you know, at times literally looking down at my feet and just going, come on, one foot, one step in front of the other, one step in front of the other. And that's, you know, all we can do in any situation, I yeah. feel. Yeah. So stay, staying present, staying in the moment is something that I've been practicing since I started my yoga journey, really. And it's a mindset. And it's what was, it was the only mindset that I carried throughout that, that course. If I started to judge what might be to come or how many more steps I've got or what else is at the end of that tunnel or how many more times we've got to go around that swamp. I just would have lost my, I would have lost my flow. So for me, there was very little thinking going on. I didn't for one minute think about handing in my armband. Never, it never crossed my mind, which I was kind of surprised at ju judging by the amount of pain and suffering <laughs> that was inflicted on us. Like I not not one cell in my body that was ever gonna gonna give up no matter yeah, how totally. tough because 100 also what i've been through in my life up until this point yes that course was painful physically yes mentally i was challenged but nothing will ever come close to what i've lived lived in for the last 11 nearly 12 months um dealing with my dad's suicide so i knew that that i was unshakable to be honest because mm. nothing nothing will ever be as bad as so without naming any names, how did you see other other team members and other sort of how did you see the group dynamic? Because some people took it very differently. Some people, some people moaned, moaned about stuff. Some people just found the way that the DS treated them quite challenging. And there was everyone had a different kind of approach. How did you find the team dynamic and 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 being with twenty strangers? I suppose. Yeah, um, for me, I I loved it because I'm such a people person and I'm very. It's part of my job to make people feel comfortable in my company and in my energy. So, and I'm the type of person that is very accepting for anybody, wherever they're at, what their opinions are. I love people. I'm very interested in the psychology of people and how they think, how they act, how we all interact with, with each other. Um, so I, I loved it. I thought it was such an amazing group of people. I I loved everybody, um, but as the days went on, I'm sure you've probably heard, there was one person in particular. I just don't like people shitting on other people. I hate people that uh, cheat. Yeah. Because I feel like you're only cheating yourself anyway, and I never cheat. I never cheat a rep. I never cheat a, 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 anything and anyone in any way, shape, or form. So when I see that, like, 
I don't like to be around that. And as I mentioned previously, if I'm if I'm around people or there's people in my energy and my company that, that I don't resonate with, I remove myself. But in that situation, I couldn't. So it was kind of a difficult one for me to be around that when I didn't have the choice to remove myself. It just it just it made me uncomfortable because I I just believe in treating people how you would want to be treated, and I would never cheat. Uh, the family which is what we were um but I'm also of an understanding that nobody nobody is born like a chi nobody's born a liar yeah. nobody's born horrible nobody's born a murderer nobody's born a pedophile or or a you know a, a, someone who commits suicide like like yeah. nobody's born with this so I'm on, on it I have a deep understanding that we are conditioned and life happens to us and creates these coping mechanisms and these belief systems for people and I know that it's not her fault but also I just feel like there was opportunities in there to speak up to tell the truth and be honest yeah to just say oh, I've made a mistake or I've made a bad decision and I, um, I'm sorry about it and I just want to say it now so let's move on yeah but that didn't happen and that made it even more kind of like you know mm. so I mean we don't know if it's if it's if it's going to be in there but you know how how did you manage that situation? Because that did kind of come to a head at one point. Yeah, I mean, it was the reason why I was removed from uh, interrogation because I basically said that I wasn't, uh, I didn't fully vibe with this person. Um, and that was when I was on my own. And then we got called into interrogation together and I was given an opportunity to to change my opinion. And I don't care whether you're stood right next to me. Like, I'm... I, that shows like, true character. Yeah, if I know if I don't resonate with someone, she knew that at that point that point anyway. We had conversations; it had come up, like the Vaseline situation had come up, the the military fitness test um, where the reps weren't met. Uh, all, had all out the, the sand out the Bergens. Yes, yes, and the sand out the Bergens. I didn't even know that until I came back. So yeah, these opportunities had already been missed, and um, so yeah, when I was that asked, person had had a few opportunities to say, yeah, sorry, like, I, I I did it because of this or that, and I made a mistake. Yeah, and it, and it and it didn't happen. So when we were brought into interrogation together, I probably wouldn't make a very good soldier because I'd rather die being honest then stay alive be a liar do you know well, what I mean? ultimately that a person like that if you have somebody like that in your team or if, like, if i had somebody like that on my watch that that is going to be a cancer to the team that is going and if, as you as a leader i mean if, if we were in leadership position in there which in many aspects some of us were in during different times and different roles that we play when we're in there it's the leader's responsibility to identify that and to cut it out with a rusty spoon if, if required, because otherwise it's a betrayal on the rest of the team because it's your job to protect the rest of the team when you identify behaviors that are going to hurt people and ultimately distrust and, 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 and lies. If we could go so far as to say that are things that really can damage a team and get people killed in environments where if you say you've done something or if you say you, I can rely on you and you have clipped this up or you have filled that person's thing up or you've got what was required and you haven't fucking got it. And that might cost somebody their life. Yeah. I mean, we'd, we'd have been dead a long time before that interrogation. So it's, it's kind of like it's a little bit frustrating. I was upset initially when I, when I got taken out because I could have gone through the interrogation and the white noise for a lot longer. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of a little bit frustrating. But that, that that person actually made it to the final. It felt like, wow, you can actually cheat your way um, to the top. They ultimately weren't chosen, though, with you know, the last bit of respect to the DS, that whilst they may yeah. have meet the physical standards, they were not yeah. approved as somebody with the right values and morals that would be come on the course. Um, yeah, like, why wasn't it questioned deeper that someone had a Bergen five kilos lighter than everybody else? Like, why was that left to just go unnoticed? Because, yeah, like, if, if we all spoke about it, we and they knew anyway, because we were asked who we trusted the least, and everybody just... You know, it said number seven, easy, no questions asked. And and she already knew how we felt about her. It wasn't one of them ones where we were all like bitching behind her back. Like we called her out, gave her opportunity to come clean and she didn't. So yeah, little bit, look, it is a show at the end of the day. It is entertainment. But if that was a real life situation, we would have either been dead a long time ago because we had someone who was just there to shit on everybody else to get to the uh, top. Yeah, you'd, you'd have tried to 
you know, safely extricate them from the team. And if they wouldn't want to, if they continued to persevere, you'd be like, look, you can come along, but you're by yourself. We're, if we yeah. get into an altercation, we've asked you to leave because you're not a positive influence on the team. So if you're choosing to come, you're coming by yourself and you're not part of this team anymore because you are, you're a hazard to the team. Yeah. And if you want to be a lone ranger, that could be it. a lone That's fine. Uh, this is a team, team effort. And we had that kind of family vibe. So it's just... It's just, it's just the case. There's always one, isn't there? There's yeah. always one, and it's given us something to talk about. And and I'm sure if if there is footage of her removing sand from her burger and, and I don't think they would. I mean, they've got a, they've got an obligation. Whilst the people that were in there know what happened and stuff like that, they probably do have to be very careful in not creating a uh, a, a public hatred of a certain individual because that could lead down a very dark path and we, you know, we sincerely hope that person because um, there's a lot of support mechanisms there's a lot of uh, psychiatrists and psychologists attached to the production that hopefully will be able to give that person some insights and help them with some self-reflection yeah. um, because it's very likely they are not manifesting these behaviors only on the show it's likely these are something that they do on a day-to-day -day basis most probably yeah they, yeah. they arrived there with them and they left with them. This is not something that was just for no, that. They, they didn't create them there. <laughs> yeah, no way. I think a few people thought that and I was like, no, like no this is such a, a persona. Like this is this is something that she's got as a protection for herself. Because this is a strategy. Her. This is yeah. a survival strategy that in the past may have was probably rewarded her. Um, you know, having, having known a little bit about this individual, they do have a challenge in um, life at certain points in their life. Yeah. And having um, a greater focus on their own survival was probably probably very beneficial at a few times. But then realizing when you are in an environment where you can trust people and those strategies aren't required, just perhaps that person's not quite there yet. And uh, no. that's a shame, but they're, they're young enough to, to maybe change it if they want to. Like you said before, you know, you've got to be willing, you've got to be accepting of these, these lessons in life. Yeah. And I just think that every everything's divinely timed. You know what I mean? Like you you will wake up to your own shit when you're meant to, and maybe it's not meant to be in this lifetime. Maybe you're meant to go through this lifetime living in this way, and it's not really for any of us to judge um, where someone is at. Is ready. The lesson will arrive, won't it? Yeah, exactly. So, but you know, we just got to say what we see, and it, pe you know, people can make other people feel uncomfortable, and and it happened occasionally in there, but it wasn't something that that got me down or no. or anything like that you know um i yeah it was uh it's more it's more unfortunate for the person themselves carrying that heavy bag around you know what i mean so so what was your favorite um task and challenge and stuff because you did them all yeah i did them all apart from the very last beasting but i'm kind of like glad i, <laughs> I did <it. laughs> um my favorite one was definitely the helicopter oh, one yeah. Yeah, so jumping out the speedboat and swimming, and because I won that one also, and I and I, I had a moment after I got into the helicopter and I was plonked down in between Billy and Foxy, and I'm in this war helicopter. There's like obviously beautiful Vietnamese um, like um, terrain that's kind of in the background, and I just look to my left. Billy's smiling, beaming at me because he's like, well done, well done. I turn to Foxy. He's smiling at Billy because I've literally, my smile is so far. Up. And I just, I remember taking a, like a, a photo. Yeah, I was like, I will never, this is the most amazing moment of my life. I'll never forget how it looked, how I felt. Just the whole vibe around that. That moment was so, so special, something that I, I will just remember forever. So that that was my that was my favorite. And also the waterfall that we did. Oh god, yeah, that was picturesque, that, wasn't it? Jesus. Thing. That was amazing. And I remember as well when we just finished that and we were sat down, you had a dragonfly lying on your knee. Yeah. And you were like, that's my dad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because for, there were so many moments in the, in the experience where I was like, fuck, the only person, the one person that I want to tell about this and share this with isn't here. But then it was so bittersweet because it was like, well, you wouldn't be here if he yeah. was. So yeah. it's like weird, like, like having to accept that I, he's not. Yeah. I want to tell him here, but I can't. And I wouldn't be here to tell him. You know what I mean? So... Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, I, I definitely felt him in, in many moments in there. As we know, there was loads of like butterflies and white butterflies everywhere. Gotcha. And 
there'd be moments when it was like really tough. Like I was, I was feeling it. I was feeling it physically and mentally. And then a little white butterfly would just fly past. And it would just, it's just, it's just those little, those little synchronicities I feel that come at the exact right, most beautiful time that just give you that, give you that encouragement or that lift or whatever it is that you need in that, in that moment. So yeah, I'm a believer that like, we we don't ever fully die we just change form yeah so i know my dad is is he's the air that i breathe he's the blood in my veins he's he is the butterflies that go past he's you know he's everywhere and everything but it doesn't sometimes that doesn't make it any easier because you just want to pick up the phone to them and hear their voice and hear yeah. like mike would be he would be so gassed if he knew what i've just done what i've experienced like he he would just be just so amazed and so proud. So it's. But yeah, I would also been... argue be so proud because of what he knows it will make of you as well. And that, yeah. even without his presence, is still just as true. Do you know what I mean? You having gone through this experience has kind of pushed you through a narrow gap in existence where you're now given the opportunity to have a different perspective on life, which it seems like you're fully embracing. I am, I, I, I am, and that's such a, an amazing way to put it. And we have to take the positives, don't we? Like, we have to look at things like this, because if we don't, we're just going to plummet ourselves. So it's given me more than what I could ever have imagined. I didn't I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what I would take from it. Um, but, yeah, physically, I'm, like, even stronger. I can feel my lung capacity has increased huge amounts, and it was yeah. already pretty good like my heart is fuller and bigger not just like like physically because it's so much stronger at pumping blood but also like I just feel so full from that experience like meeting incredible people even just being chosen like I said for you for that for that was such an uh, such a thing for me because I I do put myself down I don't really believe that I'm I'm worthy even though on the outside it might look like that I do even from my Instagram the post that I put up the stuff that I talk about there was there was and there still is that underlying self-doubt of that I don't I don't think I'm I'm good enough or I don't think I'm worthy of being successful or being seen or you know all of those things so this is just the beginning I feel for me I'm only I'm not even back a week so I'm still getting over jungle rot <laughs> like flaking off and looking like a a 90 year old woman so and 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 I know I'm just waiting for you know things to align for me to start walking down this new yeah. path that's been set so with being as, as specific or non-specific as you like because I'll be watching closely and I'm sure other people will as well you know I'm excited to see what will because when people hear this this will be like four months later than now you know this won't come down until the show comes out so Let's put our mind in four months ahead of where we are right now. Yeah. And what's one or two things that you think people would be able to see if they scrolled back to September 2022 in your profiles or in your life, yeah. as those that are close to you, what difference would they see between the time they're hearing this now in probably February 23 versus yeah. who you were when we recorded it? Yeah. Wow. Awesome question. <laughs> 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 So I guess, I guess it goes back to me and my vision board and me actually, first of all, just, just creating the person that I want to be because there's been that self doubt that's been kind of swallowing me up and keeping me small for so long. I need to really decide who I want to be because we can be whoever the fuck we want to be. Right. It's up to us to, first of all, make that choice, build that picture and then start believing that it's even possible. But, I want to be helping more people like I know the people that I that I meet and they've told me how much I've helped them change themselves change their lives physically mentally emotionally spiritually so I want to be doing more of that at the moment I'm only I'm only helping a small amount of people and I was looking for a platform for me to stand on for me to share my voice because I know deep down what I've got to offer and coming off of, off of this has made me realize, yeah, you know what? You're fucking sick, Danica. Like, <laughs> you're sick. you are amazing. And it like, 
I think some of it, when you talked about creating that person, I think that person is already there. I don't think you have to think about it. I think you just have to get out of their way. I think yeah. you have to slowly, when we spoke earlier in our conversation about unpicking the stitches, so unpicking the stitches of things like who we who we portray we are or you know feeling the obligation to 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 look a certain way or sound yeah. a certain way or espouse certain quotes and just be who the fuck you are because that person is way more than enough you know your your dad didn't admire your fucking instagram page your dad <laughs> loved you because of who you are yeah. and if you just let people experience that person especially with the with the vision and perspective that you have now that's more than enough yeah thank you thank you well yeah I think you're I think you're absolutely right and it's just about me just keeping strong in who I know I am who I who what you know what I know I can offer and what I can bring to the world and just just con and just not allowing the naysayers like my own my own fear of judgment a lot of fear behind me being judged and me saying the wrong thing or people thinking oh she thinks she's it or you know because for a lot of my childhood it was made to keep small by little gaslighting comments like you know oh you're a big mouth oh you're a know-it-all oh you know you think you're it and all or like that and it really does it really does put a lid on 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 you and we, unfortunately we grow up uh, as adults with those same you know naysayers the voices of the bullies in school the voices of the teachers the voices of the parents the voices of our siblings and all those people that are conditioned themselves but yeah so for me it's about really just knocking that on the head and not giving a shit what people think about me and um, your moral because, compass is strong the things you are doing and the way you are you way you are conducting yourself your moral compass is strong so just go with it. Don't worry. If some if people think it's a bad thing, they're just they're just looking at it through the wrong lens. Or more, more often than not, it's jealousy or fear. You you've got a good strong moral compass, and you've demonstrated that during your time during this experience. Is that you know you sadly were given an opportunity to dare and demonstrate your morals and values more than anybody else because you challenged somebody who didn't share those strong morals and values. So you, yeah. you you've got a good compass. You are where you need to be. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I just think so much of the uh, my fear of judgment, fear of that is, is in me. No one really does much to, for me to make me think that. It's me. <laughs> me. <laughs> that, oh, that person said something horrible because if I put a, a post up, I get great feedback. It's me. It's us. It's always, you know, it's my, my own self-doubt, my own judgment. I'm judging myself on being judged and potential. So it's just, you know, it is an inside job. It is ridiculous. Yeah. And it is an inside job, but it's just, <sighs> I'm outing those. Um, like when you, when you give the negative voices, the soapbox and you actually, you know, I speak to myself out loud often um, to out those voices because they, you know, they lose their power. They do. Yeah. They just evaporate and the ridiculousness of them becomes very clear to you. Yeah, yeah. If, if if all of us actually spoke what was going on in our minds, we'd all be in a nut house. Oh because... yeah, if we had like a megaphone on our heads broadcasting that shit around the street. <laughs> Most of us don't even realise what we're saying because we think we think up to 70, 80,000 thoughts a day. And for the most part, for most of us, they're the same thoughts every day. Can mm. you believe that? So no wonder so many of us go through life without ever changing and 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 you know having that belief in ourselves so yeah i'm all about calling those voices out and well look you're doing it you know you you fueled it and you've you've taken the steps like this show to go out there and do it but look, i absolutely love being in there with you and now you've got this inner team as well you know this 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 support network of all the people that have been through a similar experience and we are one million percent will be there front row cheering you on as you take these big brave steps into uh, into really showing people who you are and what you've got to offer so and also just want to thank you you know we've tried a couple of times to get together really want to appreciate you taking time out of your day to just come on and and, and be so honest and be so you know, be so humble, to be honest with you, and just be so transparent, because that takes a lot to do as well. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm, thank you so much for actually giving me your time, because this is such an amazing way to to share my experience and, you know, be asked these questions that I wouldn't even ask myself, to be honest with you. So, um, and with regards to being transparent, it is like, I want to I want to be the change I wish to see. And I know that that starts, everything starts with yourself. That's and with you.
uh, yeah, for, I, I have to be transparent. I have to be for myself and for, for everybody around me. The world needs more transparency, more honesty, more empathy and more emotion. Like it's, it's OK to like not be OK. It's OK to not like be where you want to be. And it's OK to have goals and dreams. And and yeah, want more, want more. And it's something that I'm also realizing and stepping into as well i am forever a work in progress i will never be never be finished and never be done there's always there's always something and some some more work to do and that's what i'm here for i'm not here to work i'm here to do the work and then off the back of that comes you know what, whatever life has in store for me god i love that Danica, <laughs> thank you so much that i really appreciate it um we're hopefully going to see each other long before these uh these episodes come out hopefully the gang we're going to catch up um i should be mobile in maybe five or six weeks so if you guys and girls have something before that but i know we'll get together when it all comes out anyway and then hopefully get some big events planned next year definitely i can't wait i can't wait to be reunited with all of you and i just feel like it's this is just the beginning for all 100%. 100%. of us. It's just so exciting. Thank you. See you bye. Love. bye. Firefighters Podcast is put together to develop, inspire, and hopefully even motivate those individuals who have chosen to serve our communities and be part of the first responder family. It's brought to you by myself, Operational Firefighter Pete Wakefield. If you have enjoyed today's episode and you want to see the podcast continue, please head over to our Patreon page where you can support the ongoing efforts of the podcast. Please hit that follow, subscribe, or rate button on whatever platform you're listening to. Please support your emergency services responders, and thank you for listening.